clothes on where you close I probably should stay home You probably don't have them Please go tell some right now But it's open so I'll take you They take years to chase you I never need to chase It's the truth is better So take it Tell me it's all you make this motel's supposed to be vacant You tell them you're already taken We didn't break up, it's just vacation I would just like to start off by saying I am Sid the Great and Hotels is not better than reality shows <gasps> No, you did not just do that <laughs> I told you I was I don't know, like, so why you acting surprised? Well, first of all, I don't know how I could hear you over my music playing <laughs> Oh, yes. What is playing in the living room? As long as they hotels, we're good to go. Uh, well, what's playing is Sorry We're Closed by X Brody yes. from We're Love Lives. Yes. Get to streaming the thing. Get you a shirt. Get you a, get you this merch, honey. Oh, I know. If, when, if and when you're listening to this, go to X Brody's Instagram and just blow up his mentions and tell him that you heard about him here on the pod. Mm-hmm. And, absolutely and, yep uh so and back to, back to how sid ain't shit god damn y'all sid. just y'all at this point i'm just convinced that y'all just like ho shit and don't actually care about and what the things thing sound is, like i don't even think anybody said it was better but to be like Ugh, why are you singing it Ugh, not good Ugh. you are incorrect my friend <laughs> It's all right, but it's just, you know what? I think we talked about this before, like, how you don't like to finish a book, like how you'll linger on the last two pages for, like, a month because you don't want it to end. Okay, That's, I don't know why you called me out like that. I, I wasn't, I well, first of all, first of all, first of all, I wasn't trying to call you Trigger. out. I wasn't saying there was anything, Trigger. wasn't saying there was anything wrong with that. I was about to say, I do that when it comes to listening to a new project by an artist that I like. So with Jasmine Sullivan, for instance, people have been like, oh my God, you haven't heard Hotels yet? Oh my God, you haven't heard this yet? And I was like, I am always afraid to listen to whatever the newest project is by my artists that I really like because I'm afraid to be disappointed. And it wasn't bad. Hotels isn't bad, but it's just like, it's kind of, it's, you know what Hotels is like to me? Hotels is the equivalent. But this isn't even her album though. Hotels is the equivalent of Tiana Taylor's KTSE in comparison to to Tiana Taylor's 7. I'm which, sorry, which one is supposed to be better? Uh, Seven is better than KTSE. Okay. Um, and basically what I mean by that is, is I hope this is not your introduction to Jasmine Sullivan, because if it is, I'm sorry for you. Um, I'm not sorry for you, because it was a great fucking time. The good sis could blow right. and blow these eardrums off. It's and right. also, it's not even her album. So, shut your... You know, we're not going to do, right. we do this on Black History Month. How, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Happy anyway, Black History, happy Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> happy Black History Month, people. Welcome back to the Living Room 4440. Um, I wanted to kick this episode off by not slandering the queen, Jasmine, <laughs> but by saying happy Black History Month to you and to mention or put into your awareness, if you didn't know, 10 monuments built by enslaved black people. One, the White House. Two, the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., Wall Street in New York, the Smithsonian Institution Institution in Washington, D.C., Mount Vernon in Virginia, Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., Francis Tavern in New York, Harvard Law School in Massachusetts, Trinity Church in New York, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Oh, yeah, that was 10. But, yeah, I wanted to put that into your awareness in case you didn't know. I knew a few of those, but I didn't know all of those. But, Wow. Yeah, wow, did you know, uh, here's a fun fact that um, Solomon Northup, who, uh, you know, 12 Years of Slave, the book, and for many, more people most likely knowing the movie, that he was held originally in a uh, quote-unquote slave pen that was literally like, basically, I don't know where exactly it was in proximity to the Capitol, but he talked about the sounds of chains commingling with the sounds of of liberty or whatever coming from the Capitol. Basically, there he was held in a slave pen that it, in such close distance that it could have cast, a, a shadow from the Capitol could have been cast upon it. Um, and also, um, that was another one I was about to say, a fun fact about another one that you mentioned. Say, well, say it one more time. All of them? Yeah, just go through. I'm going to stop you when I get to the one that I need to be reminded of. <laughs> oh, my God. Run through, girl, run oh, through. I'm sorry, I'm not on that page anymore. I'm really not. Oh, you... You, you. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm not going to be able to complete my thought. I'm so upset oh, I mean, and disappointed. <laughs> it wasn't Chapel Hill. Let's see. I said the Capitol. It's not the White House. Harvard. 
Huh? Harvard? No. Not Harvard. I don't know. Not George. Oh, 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 I know which one it was. Um, Wall Street. They were um um digging up something around the area about to I guess, you know, go they were going beneath the ground and found the 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 remains of the bodies of enslaved people who've been buried there. Basically Wall Street, wow. right? Which to me I think, you know, represents like the pinnacle of, of money and money making and money exchanging and things like that. Yeah, you know, like and even the original exchange at Wall Street was the the bodies of enslaved people, but yes, they found bodies underneath um the streets of Wall Street, black bodies that were once enslaved and which they knew because they were able to like look at the conditions of the bones and things and I just I was wow. I, when they said it it was so interesting because I was thinking about how malnourished those people were and and then having to work so hard at the same time like imagine working from you know can't see to can't see to quote um Frederick Douglass's um uh one of his I don't know if it's like a memoir or autobiography it has a certain name to it I can't remember which one it is but nonetheless um yeah uh can't see to can't see and you don't have barely any food right like they would yeah. literally spit in the food so that the slaves wouldn't eat it like if there was like oh we got some some yams left in this pie and they would spit in it just so the slaves wouldn't quote unquote steal any of it oh don't get me started on the slavery thing i'm scared i will i will take us down a rabbit hole in a tangent but yeah just some fun facts that i also knew about those places i didn't know that it was quote unquote built by slave labor i knew that about the capital and i knew that georgetown was giving people free tuition who could prove that they were the descendants of slaves so that makes yeah, sense. I, I remember that a few years ago. But um, yeah, wow, yeah. I tell you, people, our people, um, they have done the things, okay. And to which, while we are here, I would just like to say that I don't know who told y'all, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but she's sitting over here somewhere in this section. But um, <laughs> I don't know who told y'all to be ashamed of uh, the fact that we descend from people who were enslaved. As I told my good friend Xavier Brody, I would much rather be a descendant of a slave than the people who sold their people into slavery. But um, that's just you me. know that's uh, fair. So uh, and I, yeah, I just don't get it. Like I don't know how you don't look at enslavement and the stories of slavery, right? And the people themselves and how they still manage to steal joy and be creative um, and all of those things and see a triumph story. Like I don't know how you're like, oh, slavery. I'm gonna. I come from kings and queens. Oh my god! First of all, all of us do I mean, not. We all do of us they're... do not descend from Sunday Atakita. You probably don't even know who that is. Anyway, but, I mean, it is important to always note that we had a history long before um, slavery. And I think that that's that's the issue that I think a lot of people have is that they don't which it's not really fair to be like, I don't want to think about slavery. I want to think about before slavery when we were, you know, when we had our own. Which is what I feel like most people are saying. But that's just yeah, me. which but I'm but I'm saying like I think maybe, maybe people are like all I've ever heard about is that I was a slave, like you know what I'm saying, or that my people were slaves. That's all. That's the only Black history I was ever taught. So you know, if I want to celebrate the things before slavery, I mean that's your business. I'm just saying, don't be ashamed of slavery. Is all I would like to inspire people not to be ashamed of the fact that they might be the descendants of people who were enslaved. Oh, absolutely not. I think that my family was very powerful. I'm very proud of them. I'm very. Um, happy to know that my family was so strong and resilient for sure yeah i'm but just apologetic terrible terrible thing that they that they all had to go through and that we still all have to go through i'm but. apologetic of the fact that someone has <sighs> tricked our people into being ashamed of such a beautiful part of our history but that is all i was trying to say uh wish you all best happy black history month <laughs> okay <laughs> well in other news of look back at it month in review black history in the making Beyonce Giselle Knowles Carter oh is gosh. releasing to <laughs> us Peasants Icy Park. I should have known. Which, including in her promo, is Gucci Mane LaFleur. And all I want to say about that is, I told y'all niggas, I told y'all niggas, I told y'all niggas. Listen, from my conception and beginning of time, I have told you, whores, that Beyonce Giselle Knowles is my mother. And Rage at Gucci Mane LaFleur Davis is my father. And I and people are like, why would they ever even be in the same room? And here we are. Ah, what a glorious time. So on February 19th, all I want to say to you bitches is don't get in my motherfucking way. Stay off of the Adidas app because I have to get my things. And I don't want you in my way when I do. Got it? Good. Icy Park. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <sighs> That's my look back. You got anything else, Queen? Um, I just came to continue to drag y'all. I we, I feel like on my side of the episode is the drag a, a good dragon BHM 2021. Um I just came to drag y'all for how y'all have treated Chloe. Because mm. um how dare y'all make her cry on the internet? 
for doing the very things that y'all love to see women do. I do not understand. And I don't know who it was because sometimes I'll get in the comments and it'd be black women and I'd be like, huh? <laughs> but uh, yeah. say that to say, I don't know. It doesn't, this is what's crazy to me. Okay, so a little bit of. Um, y'all was saying by bit... why Kylie was fucking a grown man at 17. Actually, at 16 and 17. And Chloe's on here just shaking her booty. And yeah, you know, Audrey at Lord 22, was... 21, whatever, how old she is. Audrey Lord was talking about how we are so much harder and meaner to black women as black women in one of her essays mm-hmm. in Sister Outsider. Uh, again, a Black History Month plug. If y'all need a book to read, that's a good one. Um, but, and I think it's true because, like you just said, right here is. What's that girl's name? Kylie? Kylie? Um, Kylie. Out here sleeping around, you know, with, uh, which mind you, not to say we should attack her. We should definitely be attacking Tyga because why the fuck are you having sex with this child? But say that to say, nobody was, you know, I don't know, raising a mean, uh, looking at a, looking through a mean side eye or raising a mean eyebrow at that. But for some reason, Chloe does the busted challenge and gets online lighting sage and a t-shirt and some panties and y'all make her cry on the internet again for doing the very things y'all want to see and like to see women do. And if you didn't, then answer me this. Why does Chloe have what feels like to me an extra 600,000 followers than she did the last time I looked? Mm -hmm. Chloe has 1.6 million followers to her sister's like 900,000. So again, what's the difference between the two? One of them gets on Instagram and her t-shirt and her panties. And for some reason, y'all are also at the same time following her at a much higher rate, but then also dragging her and making her cry. But the sister that be out here posting the clouds talking about, hi, <laughs> that one only has 900,000 followers. So, uh, yeah, and, and to reiterate, Chloe is 22 and Hallie is 20, both both grown ups. Okay? Yeah, but I don't both even, grown. for me, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Like, I think people have a way of, like, if you are a woman who is more, I guess, um, free in her body, likes to share her body more on social media. I feel like regardless of your age, people will think that's that's all you have to offer, right? I think we reduce people no matter what they do. Like, for instance, if you're the smart girl, if you're the smart host on the podcast, and that's all you can be. You can't be anything else. If you're the pretty girl on the podcast, that's all you can be. You can't be nothing else, even though it's a podcast and you can't see either one of us. But that's the shade for uh, 20, uh, February 2021. But anyway, where I'm going with this is, is that I don't think that her age has anything to do with it. I feel like it really just is... Y'all really don't know what y'all want from women. I think y'all really just like to, I think y'all really just hate women and y'all like to attack them for anything. Like y'all know me. I will show up to the pool party in a turtleneck and a floor length skirt. But if you think I'm gonna get my black ass on God's internet (laughs) and drag this young woman for doing something I wouldn't do, no, why? Like, again, I also think it's chauvinism. Like I think it's a, oh, I do it this way. I have to be right. Therefore you have to be wrong. So if you're the quote unquote modest classy queen you then you can't like you look down upon the girls that are making three hundred thousand dollars on only fans you know what i'm saying again back to my point only fans is lucrative there are girls on there making more money putting cucumbers in their vaginas than people doing doctor things like being mm-hmm. teachers this is what y'all want please stop trying to play like you don't when it comes like time to maybe come up under some comments real quick So, yeah, say that to say, um, protect black women, regardless of whether they want to be in a t-shirt and a panties on uh, Instagram, and leave Chloe alone, because all she did was post, and mind you, you know, the other thing I think is interesting about it, too, is, like, she literally said, like, I don't even see myself this way, and I was thinking about it, like, you know what, she can't help what y'all sexualize. Y'all decided a butt was a sexual thing. It could have easily been an elbow or a neck. <laughs> like, so that's not her problem. Let her be what she wants to and do the thing. Yeah, and if I you don't like it, go follow can, Hallie. That she goes and moves in her uh, in her truth, whatever that looks like. If she's done this and she decides, you know what, I'm actually not that sexual and I don't like being sexualized, so I'm not going to do this anymore, she shouldn't have to. And if she wants to do every single busted challenge and WAP challenge in the world, I feel if that's what she wants to do, I hope that she... Uh, has the courage and confidence to do so no matter what these little ugly bugly say out here in these streets. Man, I don't know who I'm talking to again. I don't think it's any of our listeners, but y'all and y'all over here in this section too. Um, <laughs> y'all literally got mad at Cardi B for turning WAP off when her daughter walked into the room talking about, oh, so you don't let your daughter listen to it, but we both, uh, but you want our daughters to listen to it. To which I was like, when did Cardi ever say this song was meant for children? Huh? literally like, never in the history of ever but y'all just y'all just do not like women okay and i want you, i want like i said i don't know who i'm talking to but you are over here in this section i don't 
know why y'all hate women, but take some time. I feel like the same people that came for Chloe are the same ones that came for Condola on Insecure. Y'all the same people. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I hate Condola's guts. How dare you? <laughs> oh, weak. But yeah, that was that was all I had to say. I just was so upset. Like, I was like crying on the internet, especially because I just like they're such beautiful young women. And for me, they have represented this idea of, because I feel like people will say, and we talked about this before, like wearing your natural hair right or, or wearing your hair natural but wearing it locked. Like, I, of course, know that any kind of hairstyle can be elegant, but I think it was wonderful that these two young women came up and was coming to these red carpets, breaking and stepping on niggas' necks with their locks out. I was like, yes, y'all gonna wear this gown, looking like goddesses with these locks. So I said it to say, that's what they represented to me, and so I love to see them. Like, And then they're, of course, immensely talented. Listen, they have the best lighting team and the best uh, director team for their music videos. They got the best stylist team for their, their performances. I think they're magnificent. So when I heard that y'all was on here making this young woman cry, and to which I remember hearing on a podcast, they were talking about also like, why don't y'all want things to get better? Because at the end of the day, a lot of it's just about controlling women, right? Like it's always about what women are doing wrong, as opposed to just how society responds to it. And so if things are getting better and 21, 22, 23 year olds can post on social media in their t-shirt and their panties or po- do the busted challenge, to which I don't understand how she broke the internet with the busted challenge. And then two days later, Y'all was making her cry, but again, y'all all mixed up, and y'all know what y'all want. But yeah, all I want to say is leave black women alone and believe them. Because I don't know if you're going to talk about T.I. and Tiny. I don't um, know about uh, the Is that in your look back at it? I feel like I don't, like, I know the things, but I don't feel like I don't know. At the end of the day, all I'm going to say about T.I. and Tiny is hashtag T.I. and Tiny believe women. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. Okay. And if you don't know what I'm talking oh, about, go look into the allegations about Tia and Tiny being out here drug, sex trafficking and dra- raping and drugging women. That's that's what that's what's a hot tea on the streets in the hood reporting. <laughs> okay. All right. So, it, are you done with uh, look back at it slash month in review? Yeah. All I really had was Chloe, but then I thought I forgot about the Ti thing. We I forgot we haven't done a podcast. We didn't do one last week because we had that Danny Lay that's episode. Okay. It'll give us time uh, to research and see what comes up. We got to talk about the things next week when it comes to them. But yes, ma'am. Do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. All right. Moving on to black on. Wait. Blank while black. So I wanted to start by saying that today that Sid and I are recording, Sandra Bland should be turning 34 years old. So I just, you know, want to keep her, her memory, her family, her friends, her loved ones in your thoughts and prayers and um, however the story affected you to just make space in your mind for that and for your healing because it was incredibly traumatizing to like witness Sandra Bland's whole story um, unfold and yeah so um, have you ever her. noticed that? I feel like we birthday. always record on her birthday really this is I feel like the second time you've done that but maybe it wasn't not exactly al- her not birthday. always and we've only got like a year and a half of podcast but I mean that's still two years in a row I feel like it can't be coincidence hmm well, you know, I I just remember crying to my dad and being like, Dad, like, that's, like, I can see that being me. Like, uh, like it's just, I mean, I, I feel like you can see it in a lot of stories. Like, Trayvon, you know, we had just gotten to school whenever um, Trayvon was murdered. And it's just like, I can see myself in these people. And this is really, really uh, traumatizing and sad and hard as young black people and as black people just in general. Like, to see yourself in the faces of these victims and watch year after year as they never get justice. So Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy because I feel like these are, st- are galvanizing moments for people, right? Like there are people who've been brought into the movement who have found their purpose, their place in this world and their and their work based off of what happened to George Floyd, right? And there were people who, who did the same for Sandra Bland, for Trayvon Martin, for Mike Brown, for um, Tamir Rice. And I think it's always interesting because, you know, I read more historical things than I do contemporary things. And so um, when I think about, when I read about like Emmett Till being a galvanizing force in the life of Ann Moody, I think about like how that's happening now. Like we really are living history every day. And COVID is also included. And I hope y'all find yourselves on the right side of history when they be reading about these in, well, I guess 10 years from now, because that's all we got left. But um, when they be reading about this in the history books and you know you was at them parties, not wearing no masks, smoking hookah. I hope you find yourself on the right side of history, my good folks. Y'all still sit in that same section over there. I see y'all. But anyway, yeah, um, the people have been galvanized and moved. And I think about ta Heisey Coates talking about his son's response and reaction when, um, I think it was uh, Trayvon Martin's killers he was talking about in that book, um, excuse me, killer, 
um, and how he, you know, didn't go to jail, didn't get any punishment for it, you know, went on to win the lottery and sold the gun to the highest bidder. Oh my God, what a disgusting human being. I cannot yeah. stand that man. Like, it's, it's one thing. I feel like he just, you know how you can just, like, you get away with the crime, but to throw it in our faces the way that he has, like, you sold, and I mean, not even us, right? Let's let's take ourselves out of it. Imagine being the mother of a child and the man that killed your child is now selling the gun on the internet or at an auction and, and makes money, profit off of it. Like, it was the same thing as... um. It's so interesting how how many parallels there are between these stories. When I think about um, reading um, Death of Innocence, which is another really good book. I talked, about, I know I've talked about it before on here, but um, how Mamie Bradley, Emmett Till's mother, was talking about how basically um, the two men that killed her son got paid to tell the story, right? Like they were paid by whatever magazine told the story. So she was like, essentially, they got paid to kill my child. And I was like, isn't that so sad? Like, how are you a millionaire now? Like, karma cannot work like this. But you know what? In hindsight, one of the people that killed Emmett Till ended up going blind and another one died from like cancer. So you never know what's going to happen to you. He might be living well and high on the hog now, but you do never know what's coming down the pipeline. So, yeah, yikes. Anyway, sorry. I did um, not okay. mean to co opt your next, moment. <laughs> next blank while black um, is for the Rochester PD uh -oh. um, in New York. There was an incident where a mother called uh, the police and there are conflicting stories like on different news articles that I read. So I will just say them both so you have an idea. But one was she was calling about an issue with her car, it being stolen or broken into or something. And the other one said that they were called for a family dispute or a family issue. So either way, the police were called to the house. When the police got there, the nine-year-old daughter um, started having a mental breakdown or a mental slowdown, as her mother called it, and went running down the street crying for her dad. The mother, uh, is, who is pregnant, by the way, said, told the police, you know, she has these mental breakdowns. Uh, you know, she's been evaluated at the hospital before. I need you to call somebody to get her some help. Of course, the cops don't do that because pff, why would they? Um, and three cops basically chased the girl down and handcuffed the nine-year-old girl and tried to put her in the back of the police car. Um, in the video that I saw, the little girl was in the back of the police car, but because she was, um, hysterical, because again, mental breakdown, um, high stress situation for a child who was already going through mental duress. Um, they tell her basically, you need to calm down or we're going to pepper spray you in the, in the eyeballs is what they said. Um, and then, uh, they were like, you know, you're acting like a child, you're acting like a child. And the nine-year-old says, I am a child. <laughs> and the police officers come in to pepper spraying a handcuffed nine-year-old in the back of a police car. So, um, this story not only, uh, sparked a lot of protest in New York for this situation, but also because just in March, a man died after being restrained by the police um, when they put a spit bag over his head and basically held him down while he puked into his bag, like into his face, and then his body went limp and he died after going to the ICU a couple days later. Um, and after that incident, um, there was a legislation that came about that basically was talking about whenever people are having mental health episodes, absolutely do not call the cops. And they put together an initiative for um, mental health crisis people to come instead of police officers when people are having an issue because so many people have died. I mean, this man was literally butterball naked, like in the middle of the street, like clearly having a mental health situation and died because of police. So yeah. um, in New York, they put up a, basically a legislation that would have a, cri a mental health crisis team come out whenever an issue like this arose. And we've learned um, many times in the past that basically it doesn't matter what initiative you put in place to stop police from being so abusive. Um, it never seems to work out or to be what is enacted during these uh, situations of high stress. And so the officers were like, well, we initially came – um, for something else. That's why it's kind of confusing when they have the conflicting story of somebody saying, oh, we came because of a stolen car or we came because it was a mental uh, family issue or whatever. Either way, 
basically they shouldn't have been the ones responding to the nine-year-old girl they absolutely should not have handcuffed a nine-year-old girl but definitely should not have pepper sprayed her in in the face after already being told that she has mental health issues you were going to further traumatize a nine-year-old girl that would ever have to have an interaction with the police period but to have one that is violent and aggressive and one that physically harms her body um, so I just read that the mom plans to sue the police department as she should, um, for the mental anguish and physiological and emotional distress and trauma and physical injury and substantial pain, as well as coverage for any future required medical and mental health care for her daughter. Um, so the daughter, when she was running out screaming, she was, uh, the, the mom, when she asked for the mental health help for her child was saying that she wanted to kill herself wanted to kill her pregnant mom you know like clearly in need of mental health and an evaluation at the very least and before taking her to the hospital she has to go with burnt out eyeballs because the police wanted to pepper spray a nine-year-old child in the face and all i can think about is my nephew who is 10 right now being pepper sprayed by police because he's having a temper tantrum, having a mental episode, whatever he's doing, it doesn't matter. He's nine years old. I mean, he's nine years old, 10 years old. Like, no child should ever have to experience that. Um, so I hope that she sues the balls out them bitches and um, gets the money that she'll need to be able to help her daughter get through this because the mom didn't even know her daughter was pepper sprayed until the next day when she was released from the hospital. Yeah, I don't find that surprising at all. You know, to play devil's advocate, I do think... Um... Uh, excuse me, let me say I do think I do wonder about like uh police and training and reform and things like that and but I mean I know that our policing is um has a has a toxic um and harmful foundation you know what I'm saying like having been born of slave patrols and so when I think about um Asian police forces uh, police forces which I, if I'm not mistaken I think it was the Japanese police forces that I was reading about and how like they don't carry guns and how they're they're caught they're taught like combat and things like that and and like basically if you act in a fool in the middle of the street they'll just roll you up into a burrito like they have this padding mm-hmm. and they just roll you up and um that's mm-hmm. you know that's that's how they handle things and so I, I I do know or at least to me on a surface level and with that naive you know um understanding and that naive amount of or that that small amount of information that i do have about their police forces that sounds um like it does work right but again i I wonder if it is possible when you have such a long history of these things and it's so um embedded in the way that we train right like i watched a documentary where they talked about how at least this particular uh agency of the police force right like be it i think it it was definitely somewhere up north if i'm not mistaken but they were saying that like they're trained in a way that it's like to to handle very aggressive situations and like the lady they were interviewing was saying but it was like they won't find themselves in, in aggressive situations like that very often like a normal person you know a normal interaction with police is not going to be this oh my god they have a gun they're about they're running at you they're about to attack you like it's it's not going to be that kind of thing most people don't do that kind of thing when they're interacting with police um but again it's like going back to you know the foundation like if that's how you're trained though it's almost like they're training fear into them um, which is why when they do interact with, I mean, I know in this case a child, but like, you know, a person, it's like, no wonder they respond the way they do if they've been taught, like, they might have a gun, they might have a knife, they might have, like, what are you going to yeah. do? You know, I da, mean, da, da, they da. absolutely are trained that everything should be a cautious situation, which is understandable. But when you have a nine-year-old running out and a mother saying, hey, she's, you know, she's starting to harm herself, maybe you do think that she has a weapon or something else. But when the child is handcuffed, you have absolutely no reason to be pepper spraying her because she's screaming or just being a child who's distressed she literally was screaming and asking for her dad like I want my dad I want my dad I want my dad just just beside herself because she wanted to be comforted and had you came to her just trying to talk to her like the child she is and trying to calm her down at least until some mental health people can arrive you know that that should have been the extent of your job not not shoving her into a police car and pepper spraying her in the face. So um, on Monday, uh, this happened, oh, this happened at the very end of January. Uh, I mean, yeah, end of January, beginning of uh, February. Um, New York Senator Samra Brook and Assemblyman Damon Meeks, hopefully I said both their names right, both Democrats, introduced a legislation that would prohibit police from using chemical agents against minors in the state. But, um... It's just wild that in 2021, we have to be like, oh, my God, let me write it down on paper and make it plain that you should absolutely not be using chemical agents in the face of children. 
to again to 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 go throughout all the all this mess when all this stuff happens and police are like oh my god we have got to work on community relations why are people so afraid of us let's go have a police and community barbecue like bitch that's not gonna help us whenever in the meantime between time outside of your barbecues with the community you're out here pepper spraying children in the face so that they can grow up and be terrified of police just like everybody else that doesn't make any sense so yeah. brooke said um the harrowing experience endured by a nine-year-old girl in our community, including being handcuffed and pepper sprayed, should never happen to another child. This legislation will ensure that when a child is in crisis, they will never again be met with such violence in the form of pepper spray or other chemical irritants. So I don't know when that legislation could be uh, passed or approved or voted on or however it is that works, because I'm honestly not 100% sure, but... I don't know. I hate to say it, but it's like, well, that's what happened with Daniel Prude, who died in police custody last year. Um, and clearly, they didn't. Re- they still responded the same way they did before, and that was send aggressive, quote unquote, cautious, scared police officers to the aid of a nine year old girl having a mental breakdown. So, <sighs> yep, that is wild. It's sad that such sad things have to happen in order for there to be at least a uh, a semblance of of change or or movement in in such a direction, but. As is the world. I guess you just got to hope you're lucky enough not to have to endure something like that because it could happen to anyone, as we see. If children are not uh, safe, then there's no way you could be safe as an adult. One of the officers has been suspended, and the other two, of course, are on administrative duty. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. What yeah, it sounds about right. Sounds about right. And speaking of which, do you have a sounds about why or a say what now? No, ma'am. You know what I come here for. I'm just kidding. (laughs) All right. Well, here I am having to talk to you whores in Florida. And as we all know how Florida is supposed to be cut off and uh, dismembered from the United States because we're so sick of their shit. Um, The city of Frostproof, Florida has declared the first week of February, yes, Black History Month, the first week of Black History Month, Donald J. Trump Week, in honor of the former president who remains a popular figure in the area. Who? Which place? Who did this? Frostproof, Florida. Whoever even knows where the fuck bumblefuck that is. But, um, yeah, he received uh, 76% percent of the votes in frostproof florida to go ahead and change this week to donald j trump week Mm -hmm. um there was a white woman who was quoted um i voted for donald trump but i feel this is stirring the pot if they declared trump day on his birthday in june i wouldn't think twice but doing this on black history month is absolutely unacceptable very much uh and then of course the local republican party official james ring said i don't think it's fair to turn this into a race issue at all of course i don't think there was any ill intent on behalf of the city council but girl why february why the first week of february like what um you know and especially with president's day coming up you could just literally wait till that day if you wanted to celebrate donnie during that time even though he's not your president anymore bitches um yeah shout out to this uh, city of florida that no one's ever heard of and may it burn in hell amen yeah that so is that's um, my, say what now for this that's week. a mess but you know same thing with him trying to have that rally on juneteenth i think we are all aware of the tricks and oh yeah he is fully intentional and every time he does some dumb shit like this and every time his supporters do some dumb shit like this uh y'all are so embarrassing shouldn't y'all just be hiding under a rock at this point considering how your neanderthal cousins were out there rallying at the capitol yeah what a mess it's a mess out here built by enslaved peoples and i'm gonna need y'all to um just they the audaciousness the caucasity, if you will. That's all I got to say about it. Uh, the fact that a Trump supporter who voted for him, I'm assuming twice, said, now, if y'all wanted to make it Trump Day on his birthday, that would be fine. But to make it during the first week of Black History Month, I'm surprised Sis even knows what that means. But even she was tired of white people shit. <laughs> right. Right. Which I'm happy to hear about. Somebody got to be fed up at some point. I mean, at some point. Wow. Y'all are ratchet. Um, anyway, moving on. To Sydney's favorite subject nowadays. Yeah. I would like you all to remember that if you go back to episodes like one through, I don't know, 22, Sydney did not like this segment. That's because I've been reading my books and watching Sex Education and... Okay, Queen. Go promoting, ahead. Promoting whole things of, besides hotels. 
Um, oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway, See, you should love this. Way, Actually, this should be the theme song. You said hotel should be the theme song of Sex Education? I mean, like the album or the EP should be the theme song. Mm-hmm. I see what you're getting at here, but it's a no for me. Okay, playing. Queen, what is your question? I have been talking the hoes ears off. Um, Do you have a question, too? Yes. Okay, cool. I was going to say, if I also might have a follow-up. You make sure I can. Okay, go ahead. That's fine. All Take right. your time, Pastor. another Take this or that question. Oh, God. Would you rather, or excuse me, I guess, it, is this, a, I feel like this or that or would you rather are interchangeable, but, so, would you rather uh, someone spit in your mouth mm-hmm. or come on your face? Um, I'm gonna answer five. I'm gonna answer both for five hundred, Alex. Both for five <laughs> hundred. <laughs> both for five hundred. Yeah. Okay. Now my follow up. Oh, question. that's not like a dollar sign. I was just answering answering Jeopardy style. But yes, both. What a good time. Oh, you're here for both of those things. Sure. Why not? So someone has come on your face before. I don't want um an Issa Rae situation. Like I don't want come in my eyeball. But I mean, if it's come in my mouth, that's the same thing, right? I said face. Is that is my mouth not a part of my face? No, it's your mouth. Okay, well, your mouth I mean, is in I your have, face. Okay, I have um, very sensitive skin, so I don't know if that would be good or bad for my skin. So I probably wouldn't like it purposely take the risk. But also, you know, I'm team do whatever you want in your bedroom uh, when it's uh, legal and consenting. So, but, but I'm saying yeah, no, okay. no. I, I, guess, I know that your team. A little, do whatever little, you want in your bedroom, but I'm asking about a little, your work. A little spitty spit in my mouth, that's fine. And um, as long as, you know, you eat your fruits and veggies and brush your teeth and floss really well, because if you spit plaque into my mouth, I will kill you. Um, <laughs> so weak. But yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I guess if I had to say either or, I'd say probably spit. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I um, was talking you to... You swap spit when you kiss anyway. This is true. Um, I was talking to, uh, well, I, I asked uh, a good amount of my friends this before. I, I, I leaked the exclusive... Uh, this yeah. or that question. You like to traumatize them before you traumatize me? To my homegirls. Normally I like to traumatize you first and then come back around to everybody else. But this time I went in reverse <laughs> order. But I was talking to a couple okay. of my friends and one of them was saying that she felt like it was good for your skin. And I was like, I could see that. Like, I don't know if it I is. I mean, it's proteins. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if it is or if it isn't, but I want to look into that, which I shall, and I will report back to y'all whenever I remember. How, I, you know, I'll write a note in my phone to, to report back to y'all um, next week. Actually, actually, so you listen to Horrible Decisions too, right? Um, I listened to one episode so far. Okay, there was an episode where they were talking, I'm pretty sure it was Horrible Decisions, but they were talking about um, it being a trend. So they talk about like sex trends or sex in the news or whatever on their show. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about a trend where people were drinking cum. And so oh, this, there was like women, like they would ask their boyfriends for their cum every day and they would put it in like smoothies and shit and they would drink their cum every day, like mixed into their smoothies. So it's not like they were just drinking a, a cum, a, a cum uh, okay. milkshake, but okay. you know, it's got it in there. It. So, I, the, but they were saying for the health benefits, it's really good at, I guess, allegedly, you know, cell reproduction, et cetera, and helps your skin glow and whatnot. Which I would be like, why wouldn't you just try it topically first? But then again, that might be worse. Because at least if it's in the smoothie, you can't taste it. It's kind of like sea moss. Yeah. Yeah. A sea moss smoothie, but with cum instead of sea moss. <laughs> <laughs> so weak. I hope nobody takes this sound bite whenever they repost it. <laughs> uh-huh. Now that you said that, you know I probably will. Um. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay. Yeah, and then my other, of course, my other friends were, I think, um, uh, not here for it. But I was telling one of my friends, because there was a lot of stuff in high school. Like, when I was really young. I was like, oh, my God, that's so degrading. Oh, my God, it's so degrading. Like, I used to think that, like... Um, Sucking well, dick was degrading? I thought I was... But you know what it was? I think it's the position of a woman on her knees to a man. For me, in high school, I was like, absolutely not. This is so degrading. He's over you. He's literally standing over you. No, I'm not doing it. And so then, like, same thing with, like, coming on face, right? Like, I was like, mm, this is degrading. I don't understand. But now I'm kind of like, mm, you know... Maybe that means they think your face is really attractive. That's how I took it. But one of my friends was like, that's not what I'm getting out of that. And I was like, like I respect that. That's I mean, I think it can be both. I mean, I think if you, you know, in your bedroom, of course, you could be doing a whole host of things. But in your bedroom, I mean, a nigga could be looking up at you on his knees while he's eating you out. Or you could be coming on true. his face. This is very true. So, you know, as long as, I mean, I'm team reciprocity. We all know these things. So if I'm doing it, you doing it. Which is why I ain't got no backdoor action because... <laughs> Unless you want it, I don't want it. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, those are my follow up questions to my this or that because I I was telling one of my oh, friends. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have to make an announcement real quick. Okay. Um, Sydney is trying to ruin my sex life, you guys, because when she asked me about getting my (laughs) ass ate and I said I could go or leave wet butt, I was told, oh, well, I ain't doing it no more than since you could go or leave it. And you almost (laughs) ruined. (laughs) I said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Well, do you need to say what you mean and mean what you say? That is not my fault. That's your fault. Because you know what I'm not going to do? You know what I'm not going to do? Get on this here podcast. (laughs) <laughs> and downplay anything I like. So that's your, on you. <laughs> okay, well, I just had to come back to make a, a strong announcement that um, I, I do like white butt, wet butt, and I have gotten it back into my life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 God is good, you. ain't she? Disco- you know God what? Sometimes, good, ain't she? Huh? I said, God is good, ain't she? Yeah. Won't mm-hmm. she do it? I, I, I was, <laughs> was going to say, you know what? Sometimes you got to lose things to appreciate them. Mm-hmm. So maybe said, oh that's what God, happened to no. you. I need wet butt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I if you don't know what wet butt is, uh, go ahead and uh, refer to our last few episodes. But there honestly, you, you should be caught up. So that's your fault. Okay, tell them. But uh, yeah, those are my questions. Those were my follow up questions to the this that question. But I was, when I was talking to one of our friends, I was like, I feel like Aisha is gonna say spit in the mouth because I remember when I, I know I made you watch that gross, disgusting video. But I was telling, okay, I don't want a loogie in my mouth. I know the regular spit is fine. <laughs> I was telling my friend, I was like, you know what? Although she almost threw up from watching that particular video, she didn't necessarily um, make me think that she was against it in a normal circumstance because that was not a normal circumstance. <laughs> yeah, I, I said that though. Like I said that. I'm like, yeah, no, I like spit, but not this kind. Because that nigga was full on spitting loogies and sism. It was like as thick as glue. It was. Ugh. Yeah, it looked kind of yellow. No, we're done talking about it. It dead ass looked like. Diet full of acid. It, it looks like Eco Styler gel. Like, my nigga don't drink water. I can tell. Gross. Yeah, he definitely no fruits and veggies. That's for sure. Mm-mm. Like, none ever. Um, okay. So, that was mine. Which... My turn. Okay. My turn um, comes from the good prophet, our queen sister, Sukiana. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love Suki! <laughs> so, the good queen prophet sister... Mother Sukiana mm-hmm. All of the tweeted, my man, ain't ch- my man chose his family over me a few times, and he would do it again because blood ain't thicker than this coochie fat. So I wanted to ask you, Sid, does your family have to approve of your partner? Um, you know what I think? I feel like that, I, you know, I feel like I could, I definitely would want them to. But then when I think about it, like, of course, I don't, I don't know what a person, when I think about a, pa- a family not approving of a significant other, I think of like parental control. You remember parental control on MTV? Mm-hmm. When they would come up in there cursing their mamas out and just being just gross and disgusting and treating the actual significant other like crap. So that's why the parents, you know, didn't approve. So I think about like dramatic cases like that. But then I also think about like, for instance, you, right? Like not to say this is anything to do with your actual like situation, but you lived, y'all lived very far away from your families. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it's not like, oh, we go, we go, I'll go to my mama's house every Sunday for dinner, but you can't come because she don't like you. Like, it's like, I'm going to see y'all yeah, once I think when s- people get into issues like that, it, that's usually the case. Like, it's people they have to be around a lot, so they have to be annoyed by a lot. But yeah, I'm you know. right now, if, if I was annoyed by somebody's parents, it wouldn't give me no, never mind, because I ain't going to see them no way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, like, I guess it that really depends on, number one, how close you are to your family both in proximity and as far as your relationship is concerned. Because if you really only go see your, your, your family every six months, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, my mama don't approve of my boyfriend. He can't come over for Christmas. That's one that one time. We can actually just spend Christmas separately. But I, I, I will say this. that. I'm sure you'd rather be with your family and I'd rather be with mine. Mm-hmm. And, but I will say that I also don't necessarily believe in having undue stress in my life. So I said it to say, if you are in close proximity and you and you are very close to your family I, and you're family oriented, I could completely understand and being like, oh, we can't be together if my family don't like you, especially when it's a good reason, not just on some Mama Joyce or Tokyo Tony, ain't nobody good enough for my child. Because at the end of the day, everybody got flaws. Now, sometimes it really do be necessary. Like, that. Like again, that person really is disrespectful or, quote unquote, not worthy for whatever kind of, of actual good reason, but not just oh, you a doctor and he work at Foot Locker and he's not good enough for you. Not no, you know, trivial things like that. But so I would say it definitely depends on proximity and how close you are to your family 
um, and how family oriented you are. For me, again, if I live close and I spend a lot of time with my family and it's, if it's no, if this causes me undue stress, it's a no for me. Y'all know I cut off my hair because it took too much time and it was too stressful. So I said it to say, I will cut these niggas off too. Mm-hmm. What about Come you, Queen? Snip, snip. Um, yeah, I would have to agree that blood ain't thicker than this coochie fat. <laughs> um, and that, um, my partner would probably also be choosing me. I'm not going to say, I don't like the word like over, but like, as far as being like, he don't sleep next to his mommy every night. So as much as I would, you know, like her approval or like her to like me, I wouldn't really care. Like if your mom or your siblings didn't like me, I would be like, well, that's their problem. Cause you know, they don't know how I treat you for real, like, in real life, on a day-to-day. They don't know this nigga gets his plate of food brought to him every single day, whatever he want, like, spoiled head to toe. Like, they don't know that shit. They don't know our life, so I don't care what they think about me. That don't make me no never mind. Now, I will say, when I look at myself, do my, the, like, would my family have to approve of my partner? Mm. Um, like, you would I date mean, somebody, you would have dated somebody if your dad didn't like them? I was going to say, if my mom didn't like them, I could give zero shits. <laughs> if my dad didn't like them, I would really have to be like, why? But I also know that my dad is a rational person, and he's a compassionate person, and he's also he's also like, I want you to be happy. It's not about if I'm happy, because my dad, in his mind, you know, as a rational person, would be like, I don't go home with y'all every day. Like, I don't know what your life is really like, so you have to decide for yourself if you was happy. Mm-hmm. And I think that my dad knew that he gave me enough as a as a young woman and growing into a young woman that it's like I can decide and I know like how people got to respect me and people got to move around me so it's like I think he just trusted you know I did a good job mm-hmm. and she know not to be with no sucker so I'm I'm cool on it like as long as she happy and when she ain't happy she gonna leave anyway because she ain't that patient so mm-hmm. so yeah I think it would matter if my dad did but not if my mom did but it mm-hmm. would only matter if my dad did because me and my dad were so close and I know my dad to be rational, where I think a lot of people can look at their parents and be like, now I love you, mama or daddy, but I know you ain't rational. So I'm just, you know, I think that people know the difference. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, that's the end of my sex expectations question for you, All queen. All right. And now we got black on black support. That's right. That's right. I have two. Okay. I have one. You want to go first and then trade? Sure. I'm not going to say where. If you follow her, you already know. Um, but hopefully we'll have an episode on it. So we'll get into the deets later, but I just wanted to give a big, 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 big shout out to our good friend and friend of the show, Kalia for moving out of this country. A man, a man, a man. (laughs) Uh, she seems to be living her best audacious life. Absolutely. Uh, living wild and dangerous and on the edge, Mm -hmm. um, but happy nonetheless and healthy and, uh, safe. And, um, you know, I, I've gotten to see her, um, her living quarters and, you know, I see doors and windows and beds and sheets that makes me feel, uh, comfortable at the least, you Mm -hmm. know, knowing that she's not in like a, what is it? A hostel, a hostel somewhere with strangers, you know, that makes me feel good that she's nice and safe. So big, big, big shout out to Kalia for having big, big balls, Mm -hmm. big fat balls. (laughs) <laughs> shout out to the good sis Nikki Minaj for giving us that gym. Um, yeah, shout out to Kalia for um, you know I'm very happy for her because not to say people are acting as if the pandemic don't exist in the same way they are in America, meaning spreading disease and getting people killed. But because people are taking it seriously and wearing masks, and because it's so warm over there, I think warmth. Uh, and I ain't no scientist, but in my head, if they if if coronavirus wasn't spreading like that in Africa and Africa so damn hot. I feel like I could see that being a reason why. But say to say, because it's so warm over there. Uh, when she posted that, like, she had heard, heard music for the first time outside in, in months or for the first time since I don't know when. Like, I'm happy that there are people in this world who are, are being able to operate as if the pandemic has um, turned into an endemic. I think I said that right. I was reading about it earlier. Basically, coronavirus ain't going nowhere, but um, we're going to have to learn how to live with it type of thing. Um, kind of like the flu. It ain't going nowhere. It's here. We don't want to have to mm-hmm. do it. But said it to say, I'm happy that there are people, especially those who deserve it, right? Like, unfortunately, here in America, even though some of us have been taking this very seriously as a whole, we don't deserve to move on from this because we ain't been taking it serious and acting like we had no sense and doing the right thing. So we deserve to be stuck in, mm-hmm. in uh, what's it called? Purgatory, which we are. So said it to say, I'm very happy that my uh, one of my best friends is able to go somewhere and enjoy life again and be on the beach with that as her backdrop as she reads her books and things and has her mm-hmm. locks growing and flowing 
and um, has crabs in her uh, bathrooms and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, not the crab part. But I'm, I'm glad like, you clarified. Huh? <laughs> But I'm glad you clarified. Yeah, that, I had to I don't real think quick. She's beyond our podcast talking about our friends have crabs. And Khalil, when you hear this girl, if you don't get that broom and smack that crab outside like it's a hockey puck, that's what I do when I see a bug. Right. She's gonna go some, I'm gonna just leave and pray that he's gone. If he's gone, girl, he might be in your bed. He might crawl up in your coochie while you sleep. You gotta get that nigga out your room. <laughs> okay, listen. I will when I see a water bug, I act like it's a hockey puck and I act like the broom is a hockey stick and I smack that thing all the way outside. <laughs> I don't be playing no games. Especially if it's on the floor, I'd be like, Oh, that's it for you. But, um, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, back to the subject matter at hand. Shout out to Kalia for, um, being courageous enough to do that and do it on her own. And, um, have a good time, sis. Keep on enjoying your best life and keep on barely watching any TV because you got too many other fun things to do. I'm, I'm happy for you. Mm-hmm. She was going kayaking today, child. I saw. And I was like, wow, it must be nice. I should have fled with her, but I, the corona kept me in place. Mm-hmm. My Understand fear of flying, flying. Okay. Um, you want to go ahead and slide into yo black? Yes, on black? ma'am. I mean, black on black support. I'm sorry, black on black support. I would like to shout out the the good, the good, well dressed King Twain Johnson. Oh, mm-hmm. that is at Twain Johnson. That is T E W A Y N E Johnson, like you would spell Johnson J O H N S O N. He has started the standard. And that is a uh, gender neutral, let me make sure I say the things, let me make sure I get it right. It is a gender neutral accessory line. He is now having a uh, Valentine's Day sale, 30% off some I- the items that are left, don't sleep, don't sleep. Um, okay. They can be found at- that are left. Right, okay, listen. They can be found at standard.com. That is standard spelled with a V though, and there's no A, so S-T-V-N-D-R-D.com. Um, and like I said, you can follow his, that Instagram page for his actual, um, uh, page, the page for the, uh, accessories is also the standard. Again, you can drop the, uh, turn the A into a V and drop the other A that's in dirt. Um, I don't know why I said that like that, but, uh, <laughs> y'all check it oh, out. If, if you have ever followed, uh, Twain, you know that he only comes through with the come through. So anything that comes from this man has to also be magnificent also. So y'all go follow, support black, support small, Support the kings, do the things, mm-hmm. and that is uh, it for my um, black on black support. Okay, okay, go ahead. And you know what? Those are very fly accessories, by the way. They're not like that standard. I mean, no shade, but they're not like standard boutique shit where it's like everybody got the same thing and you're mm-hmm. just selling it for different prices via mm-hmm. wholesale. His are very cute. I can tell like he he definitely handpicked. I don't know if he designed them, but definitely handpicked and, and found some creative and unique pieces. So Yeah, the uh hold on, on the on one that. which what the hounds too? I'm poor and trying oh, to buy. Oh, I was looking for, you know me, my country ass. I was looking for that cow print one. Of course. Um, that house too was giving me everything I need. It screamed um Michelle Obama at the uh inaugural um thing. That's it was I'm... giving me Hillary Banks. Dare, I need three hundred dollars. Right, exactly. And so I am, you know, y'all know I'm out here trying to buy my camera, so I am uh trying to stay uh steadfast towards that goal. But say that to say, I would have definitely copped that good old houndstooth bag. So uh, if there's anybody listening out there that um, wants to be my sugar daddy or wants to, um, you know, lace me with the thing. Damn, you could be a sugar mama. Who? You don't want a sugar mama? I'll take a sugar anything. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll just take some sugar water and, and hydrate over here in the corner and mind my business. Um. <laughs> But yes, y'all, uh, yes, they were very magnificent. Sorry, got off on a tangent there. Y'all know we will tange. Mm-hmm. We will have a tangent. Um, okay, my final black on black support is going to go to, on Instagram, at the playground hottie. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, god damn. Almost coughed up my lung. Um, the playground hottie, that's jazz who has been a strong supporter of the show since we started. She's such a dope person. And she has some really funny ass like TikToks on there, which by the way, girl, can somebody please teach me how to use TikTok? I'm getting older and older by the second over here. Anyway, she's a really funny person, really good time. Um, uh, takes care of the children's and whatnot. A great person. But I brought her up to talk about how she has created a skincare line oh, with lit. all natural products. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Started um, with uh, geared to people with sensitive skin, dry skin, eczema, hyperpigmentation, etc. And that is at Zuma by 
Jasmine, and it's at underscore or at Zuma underscore by underscore Jasmine on Instagram. And when you go to your page or when you go to her page, excuse me, or in her website, you can see what kinds of in- ingredients she uses: um, turmeric, honey, uh, tea tree oil, shea butter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, all of the goods that we've all heard is so good for our skin in general. So, shout out to the Good Queen for creating a natural skincare line for people with sensitive skin, eczema, dry skin, hyperpigmentation. Because we all know that those are issues that we're all human. We all have different issues um, with our skincare. So, shout out to the Good Queen. I hope y'all go over there, buy yourself some things. It is Black History Month, so if you can, if it was within your means, go ahead and patronize a Black business, or at least share and put it in other people's awareness if you can and have the means to. Do do that <laughs> shout out to jasmine i hope or i wish you the much 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 success and um there is nothing more scary and also liberating than being a black creative or black person who starts your own business it's scary it's daunting so shout out to everyone who has really taken the time out to do what they th- say or what they think or what they have brought up in their mind but you know haven't quite brought into fruition shout out to everybody who is taking those steps to just try something you never know till you try so shout out to the good queen i hope you do very well with your skincare line girl absolutely did you say um turmeric mm-hmm. turmeric is good for uh why did you say it like that what what how am i supposed to say it turmeric turmeric you hear you hear it right I mean, I hear that we say it differently, but you can say it differently. You done smashed you all the it. letters together. <laughs> Timberry. Oh, my God. You need to watch some videos on how people say it, because I know people say it all kind of ways, because I done heard it all kind of ways. Yo, you country. Is that country? Get out. Timberry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, y'all. Tim she Rick? said Timberry, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. All right. Well, I found the name of our episode. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, all right, so um, mental check-in? Yes, yes. Actually, can I slide in a book of the month while we're here? That girl will read. Go off, sis. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm reading two books this month. One is called Queenie by Candice Cardi Williams. She's like a, I want to say a UK writer. Um, But the book is really good. And considering I just finished The Coldest Winter Ever, I need something to hold and pacify me until the sequel, Life After Death, gets here. So a friend of mine, uh, God, I want to say summer of last year, sent me this book, Queenie. And she said, you know, it was a really good time. It's just, you know, a fun novel. Um, Not coming of age. It's more like women our age. So I think the main character is 25 years old. Um, You know, just going through dating dating life and makeup breakup situation hanging out with her homegirls and different friend groups and different things like that so it was a really fun read so far which I needed the balance because the second book that I'm reading this month is Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust Mm -hmm. by John Henry Clark so you know when I read something that's like a little bit more I try to read something to balance it out. So I'm reading a novel and um, that book as well. So that's what I'm reading. Let me know what y'all are reading um, or if y'all want to read anything I'm reading. And if you need to know where the black bookstores are, let your girl know. Okay. 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 Mental health. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, what do you do to heal? Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll let you know what I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel that. Okay. I decided my new answer to people when they be like, why don't you want to have kids? Because, you know, people are obsessed with my room. Um, that my new answer is going to be, oh, you know, I will have children when I heal from my childhood trauma. Because I feel like that'll make them shut the fuck up and stop asking. No, they're probably going to ask you what your trauma is. And, or like, oh, they'll they'll say, oh, oh, trauma. Tell me all about it. I'm a licensed psychologist. You'll be a good mom, even though you have trauma. No, they'll be like, oh, you'll figure it out. That's what they always say. You'll figure it out. Um, so I could be a shit mom? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, uh, how do I heal? I'm trying to think of a specific situation that I've healed from that I'm hmm, trying to figure out. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like it's mostly time. Mm-hmm. And then it's um, uh, probably the intersection of all of the little things that I've done. I don't think that there's one particular thing, but there's been times in my life where I feel the very like intense need to journal everything every day. Like I woke up and made my bed and then I did this and then I worked out. Like sometimes it's like incessant journaling. Sometimes it's, um, just working out like crazy. Y'all know I'll get into little fits where I got to work out like twice a day and just be crazy. Cause it feels good to me. Like it feels good to me to be, 
like just getting all that energy out. Um, but I think on a deeper level, I think the best thing you can do to heal is talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I mean, and I know that therapy can be expensive. Everyone's like, oh, why don't you go to therapy? Why don't you go to therapy? I understand that therapy can be very expensive, especially if you don't have health insurance. And hell, sometimes even if you do, even if you just got to pay a copay, you know, every time, it can be expensive. So I understand why that's a drawback for a lot of people. But um, I think talking about it, talking about it out loud, there was something that I used to do, um, and that was recording. Like, I would just talk and purge my feelings, and I would record it because I wouldn't want to call my friends and put that kind of energy on them. So I would just call – I would just, like, report it in a memo in my phone, and maybe sometimes I would listen, sometimes I wouldn't. But sometimes just saying things out loud that you're feeling internally mm-hmm. is really, really healing. Um, it's kind of like when you when you think something and then you go to tell the, another person out loud, you're like, actually, that don't even make no sense. Now I didn't set it out loud. It's kind of like that. But it's not that it doesn't make sense. It's just that you're getting it out of your system and you're letting, you know, the universe hear it or a friend hear it or whatever. I think talking about your issues is what is what really helps you heal from them because it helps you it helps you be able to take it out and put it somewhere and be like, okay, I've taken it out of my body and I've set it here on the shelf or set it somewhere else or talked through it. And now I'm done with it. I can move forward with my with my life Mm -hmm. that's beautiful i think i queen how do you heal i think i should have worded it uh as in how do you uh ground okay but that's okay uh next time (laughs) um I was like, God damn, this is a heavy ass question. Why she do that to me? Yeah, I literally was like, as soon as you started like, you know, explaining yourself, I was like, wait, I probably did not say that right. But um yeah, I would definitely say time. Um I don't, I'm starting to wonder if I am a forgiving person. I think we talked about this before, like, the difference between forgiveness and, like, or not even necessarily the difference between, but how you forgive but don't forget. But it's like, Mm -hmm. for instance, when, like, for instance, somebody might say, um, I ain't gonna ever let you play me for no fool again. But it's like, did Mm -hmm. I really heal from that? Or am I still holding on to that trauma if that's my reaction? Like, or, I mean, and that's what makes me wonder, like, is healing, when somebody has done something to me that I feel like has wronged me, or made me maybe not trust them in the same way, or made me say that, okay, maybe you weren't meant to carry this weight of being my friend or my close friend or whatever, um, then I just wonder if I really do heal, or if healing is just this whole, like, not letting you play me for no food no more. But, um, sad to say, yeah, I don't know, uh, if I know how to let things go when someone does something to me specifically uh like Mm -hmm. my friends I mean my close friends but um like you said time um I do think journaling uh or not even necessarily journaling but like thinking through things but then also trying to find a balance between thinking through and not overthinking that's the whole situation Mm -hmm. um hmm. I didn't actually think through this question before I asked it (laughs) maybe meditation uh, I don't know. Actually, I'm gonna go with I don't know if I actually ever heal from anything because I don't know if I ever let things go. So I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna put a pin in it and come back to it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I didn't really have one today. Okay. So, but you have affirmations. Um. <laughs> kind of. I was just gonna say, you know, with it being Black History Month just to tell the beautiful people that you are black history. So whatever you're doing in your life, try to move with purpose and move in a way that'll make your descendants proud of you. Mm-hmm. Mine is read a book, read a book, read a book. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Mine is, you know, one I've said before, take it easy. Be easy on yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's still a panorama, a Panera bread. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And things are still crazy. Um, things are still scary. Um, but also something that I'm thinking about right now is, um, uh, like just not sh- being stressed out about COVID. Cause y'all, if you know me, child, you know, I was scared. I didn't go nowhere, but the grocery store back to the house. And I only went to the grocery store at seven o'clock on the dial with nobody else in there. And the air from last night had dissipated and it couldn't be clinging to no COVID. But now like after reading that article today that was just like, yeah, girl, COVID's not going anywhere. Um, we're gonna have to learn how to live with it. Like that's what the epidemiologists have been saying. And again, it makes sense, right? Like diseases, they you know, I think we get better with handling them, with vaccinating them, with um 
and being able to like our hospitals being able to you know take care of people who have these things but they don't, I don't think I don't know if they ever really go away like I wonder if a disease has ever just went away completely right um, maybe just getting down to numbers where we don't have to be scared but just trying to find a way to still have joy in these uncertain times you know what I'm saying um mm-hmm. I guess it's my affirmation. So yeah, to be easy with oneself because it is still a pandemic, but also still finding a way to have joy and have fun without, you know, necessarily putting people at risk or, or spreading the virus as we still try as, as our scientists and our epidemiologists and our all the people, all the folks that have been working very hard to get this thing under control as they still try to figure this the whole situation out. So mm-hmm. with that said, we are thankful that y'all have joined us here once again in our good living room. Uh, thank you for sharing your time with us. Because, you know, time is precious. I love y'all. I have been Sid the Great. Mm-hmm. And I am Aisha Damali. Thank y'all for joining us in the living room, for being our roommates, um, for listening to us talk about all of the things. Mm-hmm. We hope that y'all enjoy our, uh, your Black History Month, um, that you learn something new and that you do something to really progress our world for our future and for our children in the world. And it's been real, y'all. I'm about to turn back up this music because I'm about to get on out of here. I'm about to play Sorry We're Closed by X Brody. Y'all ain't got to go home, but y'all got to get the hell out of our living room. Peace. We didn't break up this just vacation. Let me know when you get to Vegas. I know it's a secret, but say it. Who the hell are you entertaining? You got me going along, thinking it's me and you. I, I can't control nobody, but I'm not just anybody. And I hope that you know. So right now, but it's open, so I'll take you. You take it to chase you, but never need to chase. It's the truth is better, so take it. Don't tell me you saw you make it. Uh, this motel's supposed to be vacant. You tell them you're already taken. We didn't break up, this just vacation. I had some plans for you. But why the say when nothing's new and everything's how it used to? Oh, how it used to be. Oh, uh, how it used to be. Sorry, we're closed. I probably should stay home. You probably don't have room. This motel some right now, but it's open, so I'll take you. They take kids to chase you, but never need to chase. It's the truth is better, so take it. Don't tell me it's all you need. Uh, This motel's supposed to be vacant You tell them you're already taken We didn't break up, this just vacation We can work it out when we get back Okay, here's your keys. It's going to be on your left-hand side. Thank you so much.